Hello, and welcome to ShipU Stats. In this video, we're going to go over a one way repeated measures ANOVA in JASP. A one way repeated measures ANOVA, which is also known as a one way within subjects ANOVA, will allow us to compare three or more measurements of the same group. A one way repeated measures ANOVA allows us to see if there are any changes between measurements of the same group when that group has been measured three or more times. Instead of running lots of little comparisons between all of those measurements, a one-way repeated measures ANOVA allows us to run one test to see if there's any differences between these different time points. This will prevent any inflation of our type 1 error rate. Some examples include, is there a change in stress among college students at different points during the semester? Or, is there a change in job satisfaction over time among warehouse workers? Like all tests, there are a list of assumptions that need to be met before conducting a one-way repeated measures ANOVA. The assumptions for a one-way repeated measures ANOVA include the following. We need to be comparing three or more measurements of the same group, and those measurements must be interval or ratio scale. All of our data needs to be approximately normally distributed. There needs to be no substantial outliers in our data set. And lastly, the variance of the different scores between all combinations of measurements are equal. This is also known as sphericity. In order to conduct a one-way repeated measures ANOVA, the first step will be to enter our data into a spreadsheet. In our first example, we're looking at job satisfaction scores amongst warehouse workers one month, one year, three years, and five years into their careers. To enter our data, we'll just put those scores into a column for each different measurement time point, lined up so each row represents a person. In our second example, we're looking at freshman college students and their stress scores at one week into the semester, five weeks, 10 weeks, and 15 weeks into the semester. Again, we have those scores listed in each column for each different measurement time. All right, on to JASP. Now that we have our data in JASP, we can go ahead and prepare to run our one-way repeated measures ANOVA. The first thing we should do to run our one-way repeated measures ANOVA is make sure that all of our variables are set to scale. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and click on ANOVA, and then click on Repeated Measures ANOVA. Now that we're here, we're going to have to give JASP some information about our independent variable. Right now, the only information that JASP has is the different measurements of our dependent variable at different points in time. So for our first example, our independent variable is the time that they were measured, or the year that they were measured, one month, one year, three years, or five years in. So we'll have to name our independent variable, year, and then we'll have to name our different levels of our independent variable, month, one year, three years, and five years. Now that that's entered, you'll see that we have cells over here where we can enter that information. I'll go ahead and move the, that over into those cells. And as soon as I did that, I had an ANOVA table pop up over here. The ANOVA table we want to pay attention to is the within subjects effects, because we're looking at the differences within our individuals across this time period. We have our degrees of freedom, our F value, and our P value. In this particular situation, we do not have a significant ANOVA, and so we won't go on to any follow-up tests. All right, let's go to our other example. To look at our other example, we'll go ahead and remove all of the variables that we had for our last example, and we'll rename our variable. Here, we're dealing with weeks of the semester, and so I'll name my variables accordingly. Additionally, each measurement has its own time point, and so I'm going to enter those in here as well. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and move over our variables, and we'll see an ANOVA table pop up over here. Here we have our degrees of freedom, our F value, and our P value. And because we have a significant ANOVA, we can go ahead and do our follow up tests. To start, we'll go ahead and grab our descriptive statistics. So we have our means and our standard deviations. And note that JASP lists things alphabetically. We can then go ahead and select post hoc tests. 
move over our independent variable of weeks, and then select Bonferroni tests. Here, we can find the significance between our different weeks, and here we only have significance between week 1 and week 10. All right, now that we have our results for both of our examples, let's go ahead and write this up in APA format. In our first example, we found that there was no significant differences in measures of job satisfaction at different points in a person's career. So we're going to write a sentence that conveys that information. Here, the results of the one-way repeated measures ANOVA showed no significant differences between measurements of job satisfaction. I've entered my F symbol here, my degrees of freedom between and within, my F value, and then my P value. In the second example, we had a significant ANOVA. Because of that, I wrote a sentence that conveyed that information to the reader. The results of the one-way repeated measures ANOVA showed a significant change in stress scores at different times throughout the semester. I entered my F symbol, my degrees of freedom between and within, my F value, and my P value. Because my ANOVA was significant, I conducted some follow-up tests, specifically Bonferroni's post-hoc tests. Here, I found a significant difference between week 1 scores and week 10 scores, but no other differences. So I wrote a sentence that conveyed that, telling the reader that we used Bonferroni's post-hoc tests, and explaining the differences that were found that were significant and the ones that weren't. I also entered the means and standard deviations for each of those groups, so the reader has that information. Alright, thanks for watching this video on how to conduct a one-way repeated measures ANOVA in JASP.